All right, guys, this is Woodstock, Virginia. This is where some, some great history happened. In fact, this is where John Peter Gabriel Muhlenberg was a pastor. You can see the, the stained glass window there is dedicated to him. This is not actually the original church where he preached. That church was uh, close to here, but it was destroyed. And this one was built in the 1800s. And this is the ongoing uh, church that actually met there. And their story is amazing. He was a member of the legislature here in Virginia, and he actually got to church on Sunday morning, January 21st, 1776. We're still six months from the Declaration of Independence, but he had been in Williamsburg where there was already fighting. The British had come and taken our munitions. He knew that he was a citizen of heaven, but also a citizen of earth, and he even used that language. Some people today think that if you're gonna be a good citizen of heaven, you only think about heavenly things and you don't worry about what's going on around you. Muhlenberg brought it home to the folks in his church. So he comes back here and gets up and preaches out of Ecclesiastes. And so he's preaching out of Ecclesiastes 3, talking about a season for everything, that there's a, a, a time to rejoice, a time to mourn, there's a time to plant, time to harvest, all those. He gets to verse eight, and you can just imagine him in that pulpit. He gets to verse eight and he says, there's a time of peace and a time of war. And he tells his, the folks in his church, this is no longer a time of peace, it's a time of war. He actually takes off his clerical robes, he's in the full uniform of a military officer, comes down the middle aisle, calls his men to arms, and he goes off to fight. And then he gets a letter from his brother, Frederick Augustus Muhlenberg, who's also a pastor. So you guys can imagine the sibling rivalry between the brothers, right? His brother's a pastor in New York, writes to him here in Virginia because he's gone off to fight. He says, you're a preacher, you're not supposed to be fighting, uh, you, sh you should have never gotten involved in all this. And he wrote his brother back and he said, you know, I am a preacher, but I'm also a citizen. And I love my freedom as much as anybody else and I'm willing to go fight for it. I have a duty to God and the country. So he kept fighting. When you say the phrase, brother against brother, people tend to think of the Civil War. But in reality, that was true for the Revolutionary War as well. It was really the first civil war in America because it was the British citizens versus their own government. And I, I can't even fathom believing in a cause so, so dearly that I give my life for it and having my own family oppose me. The brother out of New York that had disagreed with him, the British came into his church, they kicked him out of his church, desecrated his church, and that was a little bit of a wake-up call for him. So then he gets involved, and years later, he actually becomes the very first Speaker of the House under our new Constitution. So remember, the Bill of Rights was adopted in that first Congress after the Constitution had been ratified, and he's the Speaker of the House when that happened, so he's, he's actually the one that signs the Bill of Rights. Now, John Peter, the one that preached here, he's also in Congress at the time, so it's two brothers, pastors, but also members of Congress. So they were pastors, but they were involved in the culture, influencing the culture, and helped us secure our freedoms. I think that even though that was, you know, 200 years ago, that sometimes that still is how it is today. We have families and oftentimes brothers who are on different sides of issues. And so really nothing's changed. And it's neat to see how they came together in the end and ended up serving our country in a very important